Assalamu alaikum. Uh, brothers and sisters, my name is Aman Opsia. Before I get into my speech, not even a speech, I'm going to say whatever's in my brain, whatever's in my heart. I want to give you a brief introduction about myself. And forgive me if I'm blunt, but I want y'all to know who I am, and I want y'all to understand my angle so y'all understand why I'm here. First, I'm not Dulbahante. <laughs> so let me just say that. I'm not Dulbahante. I'm a Gedubursi man. I'm from Boroma. <laughs> and uh, the reason I brought up uh, the tribe is because this is not about tribe. This is about ideology. It's about unionism versus successionism. It's about should Somalia be one or should Somalia be ten? It's not about two, because if Somaliland succeeds, a lot of other people are going to succeed. We will become the new Yugoslavia. So it's not about tribe, it's about ideology, unionist versus successionist. So that's why I brought up my tribe. Secondly, as the brother said, I was born and raised in America. I was born in this country, I was raised in this country. If I, I was born in America, raised in America, if I was a commodity, I would have stamped on my forehead, made in America. But I'm very much Somali. I've been back home, I've been to Borma three times in ten years. So I'm very much Somali. And lastly, I am the first Somali American to get a Juris Doctorate from the University of Minnesota Law School. Now, Let's talk about the war of ideology. And we're going to have to get into uh, our history so we can understand why we're here today, November 2014. Why are we fighting for a united Somali Republic? So our flag right here, a beautiful flag, probably the most beautiful one, has a white star on it with five points. We all know what the flag means, but just for, to refresh our memory, the white star represents the five colonial territories, and that white star represents the birth of Somali Wayne. If you look at Somaliland's flag, they have a star with five points, but it's not a white star. It's a black star. <laughs> and the black star represents the death of Somali Wayne. <laughs> so you have to decide what do you want? Do you, do you believe in the white star or do you believe in the black star? Do you believe in the Somali, that Somali Wayne still lives amongst us? Or do, you, or do you believe it shall die amongst us? So it's not about this tribe. It's not about that tribe. It's about, shall we stay united or shall we be divided? So it's a war of ideology. Don't let nobody tell you it's some type of tribal feud. No. This is a war of ideology. This is a war of unionist versus successionist. So let's talk about how Somalia did become united. Let's talk about history. We all know about the SYL, the Somali Youth League. May Allah bless them. They are... They're, they're founding fathers of the Somali nation. We give them that. But there's another group who's not spoken about in our history too much. But their contribution to Somalia, their contribution to the Somali nation was probably greater than any other group. Not taking anything away from the SYL. But how many of you know about the USP, the United Somali Party? Now, the United Somali Party, there was two groups, as we know Somali, what we know as Somalia today was two colonial territories. There was British Somaliland, and there was Somalia Italiana. They say Italian Somaliland, but Italians don't speak English, they speak Italian. And so in the Italian language, it was called Somalia Italiana, and we were from British Somaliland, okay? 
So these two groups came together to, to make the Somali Republic. So how did that happen? In British Somaliland, there was two groups. There was something called the SNL, Somali National League. Later they would become the SNM. And then there was the USP, the United Somali Party. Okay? Now what did the United Somali Party do? They were the ones who actually said, let us unite the British colony with the Italian colony to make Somali wane. That was the USP. That wasn't no other group. That was the USP. And we all know about the Khartouma 2 conference. We know about the Khartouma 2 conference. So if there was a Khartouma 2 conference, obviously there was a Khartouma 1 conference, right? When there's movies, Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3, then there was a Spider-Man 1, right? So let's talk about the first Khartouma conference, because that's not spoken about in our history too much. But that was probably the most important conference in modern-day Somali history. In the 1950s, what was it, uh, 1954? 58. 58, excuse me. In 1958, the Khartouma 1 conference was held by the USP. And the USP decided at this first Khartouma conference that we are not going to become a, our own country. We are going to unite our colony with the Italian colony to make Somali Wayne. So Somali Wayne, the United Somalia you know, was actually born in 1958 by the hands of the USP. So when you fast forward today and wonder why there was a, a Khartouma 2 conference, you have to understand that the people came together and they said, our nation is becoming divided. How did we unite our nation from a Khartouma conference? So if we're going to reunite the nation, it's a must that we host another Khartouma conference. And that's why Khartouma 2 happened. Because it was a conference about unite in Somalia once again, just like they did in 1958, is to let everybody know, yes, we are Red Wukhoi, right? We're Northerners, right? But that doesn't mean we want to divide the nation. That doesn't mean we are going to turn our backs on our Somali brothers and sisters in the South. No, I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. So let us, uh, five more minutes, I'm, I'll, I'll be done literally. <laughs> so, so let us um, speak about how my native city of Borama no longer has this beautiful flag with the white star waving in it. Let's speak about why Las Anod no longer has this beautiful flag waving, but instead a black star. Why? It wasn't because we said, we had an election and said, hey, we're replacing the flag. No, in April 1991, the SNM came to Borma with a gun in our face and said, hey, put down that flag, put up our flag. In October 2007, they came to Las Anod, they put a gun in your face and they said, put down that flag, put up our flag. It was through the barrel of the gun. It wasn't freedom of choice. It wasn't our on our own will, in our own volition. They put a gun to our face. They put a gun to our face. So the United States, the European Union, the United Nations, and all nations of this world must understand that the people who live in northern Somalia, if given the opportunity to choose between unionism and successionism, they will always choose unionism. But it's hard to make a free choice. It's hard to make a free choice when there's a gun in your face asking you what flag do you want. <laughs> Let's be fair. So, we all know about Al-Shabaab, right? That's the big bully. That's the big boogeyman back home, right? But what happens if we defeat Al-Shabaab today? Tomorrow, we still have this threat. This is what is known as an existential threat, meaning it's a threat to your existence. That means it's a threat to the existence of your nation. Somaliland 
and the successionist ideology.